creating a PVD and peeling the internal limiting membrane for a traumatic macular hole. So here we can see the PVD being created once the vitreous has been stained using triamcinolone acetate suspension. Once the vitreous which is attached to the disc has been detached, there is a whole sheet of vitreous which, vitreous which comes up and has to be consumed so as to bear the surface of the retina all around and also to prevent the formation of epiretinal membrane in future. Here it is essential just because one has to access the surface of the retina where the internal limiting membrane lies. So once that step has been completed, then one has to stain the internal limiting membrane using supravital dyes. And here we have used brilliant blue dye as provided by Aurolab. It's always better to use Lander's lens, which provides you an upright, same size image with no minification or magnification because this is the flat lens out, out of the Lander's lenses set. And it has advantage that gives you a very crisp and very clear view with no artifacts. One has to proceed, first of all, to create a flap. Now this flap can be created by using a diamond dusted membrane scraper or flex finesse loop which will cause a shearing surface traction which will simply detach a portion of the flap here. But I will demonstrate this, the pinch and peel technique which doesn't require any use of any such shearing instrument and you simply approach the surface of the retina and gra grab the internal limiting membrane using the fine ends of the ILM forcep from Greisheber. These forceps are excellent in the consistency and the design and they never miss to provide you a wonderful grip and a very precise hold when you are trying to hold your internal limiting membrane. So here you can see a flap has been raised and using that edge one has now started peeling the large area of the ILM. Now this ILM behaves differently when compared to a anterior lens capsule which is much thicker in consistency when compared to a limiting membrane. So this limiting membrane because it is thinner and fragile tends to break up frequently when compared to anterior capsule of the crystalline lens. So one has to have a strategy. So here you can see once the flap started to taper out, I have extended the flap so as to have a nearly new edge for me to grab and proceed. So once this edge which has been created by the preceding flap which has been detached and peeled away, I use this edge to raise another flap. One has to take care that the peeling has to be centripetal. You don't want to create any surface tangential traction to enlarge the hole. So one has to always peel from the periphery towards the center of the hole so as to keep the traction centripetal so that there is no tissue which is being dragged towards the periphery from the hole and this will also help in closure of the hole as seen on the table per operatively. One has to take care that a large area usually the area which is encompassed by the arcades the vascular arcades encompassing the macular area one has to peel the ILM within that zone. So you proceed by creating flaps and raising and peeling the membrane as you proceed. We have now nearly completed a large area as desired and this finishes off a round area which is encompassing the posterior pole centered over the macular hole. Here I have left behind the flap which is attached to the edges of the macular hole because it is a traumatic macular hole as a large hole 
so we need some kind of a scaffold which can be the ilm itself which is adhered to the edges now we will trim this ilm using a high cut rate and a low aspiration flow rate so that the edges which are attached at the macular hole will themselves provide a scaffold for the retina to come back and the borders to join I enjoy doing macular hole surgeries a lot because these provide me with a fulfilling challenging task thank you